of you as a student teacher. Anyways, let's start today's topic. So today's topic that we are going to start is nationalism in India. And the subtopic for today is Okay, 
So the Salt's Law, during the British government, there was a law, okay? That was called the Salt's Law. Right? So this Salt Law said that okay, the Indians, okay, the Indians were prohibited or they were not allowed to manufacture the salt and sell it. Alright? Only the British government had the right to manufacture the salt and sell it. So because of this, the poor people of India had to pay the tax to the government on the salt. Understood the salt law? Yes, miss. What, what does the salt law say? It says that, okay, the salt law says that the Indians, the Indian peoples were not allowed to go to the sea coast and manufacture the salt. Okay, so the British government had the monopoly over its production. So what do I mean by monopoly? It's about uh, the complete control over something. Okay, the British government had complete control over the salt production. Understood? Yes. yes. So, and I said that in Mahatma Gandhi wrote a letter to the Viceroy, Lord Irvin. Lord Irvin. Yes. Lord Irvin, the Viceroy Irvin also. Okay, so he wrote a letter to Viceroy Irvin. What he, uh, what he told on that letter, Vanda, there was 11 demands. Out of that 11 demand, what I what I said, there was one demand that was to abolish the salt tax. No, salt tax, sorry. Okay, so, and the letter which was wrote by Mahatma Gandhi to Lord Irwin, that was kind of like an ultimatum. Alright, it was kind of an ultimatum. So now, what do you mean by ultimatum? Okay, so, I'm, I'll tell you. Ultimatum means, uh, like, it's kind of a warning itself. Okay, it's like a warning. warning. So, Mahatma Gandhi warned Lord Irwin that if the demands that he wrote on that letter was not fulfilled by 11th of March, okay, if that demands was not fulfilled by 11th of March, then they will, then the Congress party will, not the Congress party, but the participants of the Congress will launch the civil disobedience movement. Okay, so after that what happened was, do you think Lord Irwin uh, negotiated that, responded the letter? No, right? So, Lord Irwin didn't respond to that letter. Okay, till 11th March, he didn't negotiate it. Okay, or respond it. When, and when Lord Irwin turned a deaf ear, okay, Mahatma Gandhi said, on the knees, okay, on the bended knees, I ask for bread. Okay, on bended knees, I ask for bread, but I have received the stones instead. Alright, he said that. Why? Because he was very disheartened. Okay, he warned Lord Irwin to abolish the salt law and, uh, and many more demands, but that was not negotiated. Okay, that was not responded. So, finally what happened was, on the day 12th March, at the morning of 6.30 a.m., okay, of Proc 6.30 a.m., Mahatma Gandhi set out his journey, <clears throat> okay? He set out his journey for almost 240 miles, all right? He set out his journey for almost 240 miles from Sabarmati Ashram, okay? From Sabarmati Ashram <coughs> to Dandi. So the place you see here is Sabarmati Ashram, all right? This is also known as Gandhiji's Ashram. It is located in the banks of the river of Sabarmati in Gujarat. Alright? And this is recent Dandi. Okay? It is the coastal town in Gujarat itself. Okay? So the whole, the whole process of the salt march took place in Gujarat. So uh, a study reveals that our brain processes well, okay, our brain functions well when we see
see the thing instead of hear instead of hearing okay we see the thing which uh, we will understand better when we see the things if uh, uh, instead of hearing so i have prepared a small a model okay so here you can see here is just a small effort to make you all understand so this is the model okay the salt march and you see here the small house okay the small house that is the sabarmati ashram okay <clears throat> that is the sabarmati ashram where mahatma gandhi and his wife lived okay so you see the please this road okay this joins to dandi so this this says that gandhi ji's salt march started from sabarmati ashram okay to dandi all right okay so those how many days when he reached dandi was it was 24 days okay so it was 24 days and um that means uh they walked for 10 miles each day okay for one day they used to walk 10 miles so after walking 10 miles they used to halt in some places right they used to halt in some places and what did they do banda this is the salt march okay they are marching what did they do banda the uh, mahatma gandhi where where they halt me mahatma gandhi uh, started to give some speeches okay about the swaraj about to get freedom freedom for independence okay to the british government have to come to an end on era he used to give the speeches and and thousands of people used to come and hear him all right thousands and thousands of people used to come and hear him about the speeches okay so you see here what is this Charkha. 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 Yes. Charkha. This is Charkha, right? So this symbolizes Mahatma Gandhi. Everyone can see this. Yes. yes. Okay. So this symbolizes Mahatma Gandhi. Why? Because he is the father of our clothes. Yes. It's very good. Because he used to wear khadi clothes, right? And Charkha. Sorry. Charkha used to produce what? Khadi clothes. Okay. So uh, we can say that this charkha symbolizes Mahatma Gandhi. And coming back to the topic, they walk for how many days? Twenty-four days. Okay, twenty-four days. And from the beginning, okay, when when uh, Mahatma Gandhi started to walk from Sabarmati Ashram, there was only seventy-eight of their volunteers. Okay. There was only seventy-eight of the volunteers who accompanied Gandhi ji to for the salt march. Okay, so he reached Dandi. All right, after twenty-four days, he reached Dandi on six April. Okay, he reached Dandi on six April, and what did he do, Vanda? He went to the coastal side. Okay. He went to the coastal side and picked a handful of salt. Okay, he picked up a handful of salt. Let me show you this. Okay, like this, he picked up a handful of salt. And what did he said, Banda? He said that with this, okay, the salt. With this, I am shaking the foundation of the British Emperor. Okay, what did he said? After grabbing a handful of salt, he said that with this, I am shaking the foundation of British Empire. Okay, all right. Yes. Now, when he started the march, okay, there were only how many people? Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight people. But when he used to halt in some places and give his speeches, okay, thousands of people participated in that march. All right. So when he reached Dandi, there were thousands and thousands of people who participated and supported the Salt March. All right, understood? Yes. Yes. Everything is clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. So after picking up the handful of salt, okay. After that, what he did, Banda, Mahatma Gandhi, ceremonially violated the law. 
In December 1929, the Lahore Congress, led by Jawaharlal Nehru, demanded full Swaraj or full independence for India. People were asked to take a pledge to struggle for full independence. Unfortunately, this call for independence did not find much support among the public. Therefore, Gandhiji decided to launch a mass movement which would attract everyone towards the cause. Earlier, the British had imposed a tax on salt. It affected everyone, whether rich or poor. Gandhiji found in salt a powerful symbol that would unite the nation. He gave an ultimatum to the British government to withdraw the salt tax. When the government did not listen, Gandhiji started his famous salt march from his Sabarmati ashram to the coastal town of Dandi in Gujarat. There were about 78 people who walked with him. He stopped at various places and spoke to people. Thousands came to hear him. He told them what he meant by Swaraj and urged them to defy the British non-violently. After walking for 24 days, they reached the seashore. Gandhi picked up salt by the seaside. He boiled water and made salt, thus violating the law. This action marked the beginning of the civil disobedience movement. Nothing's clear? Yes. 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 The whole process marked the beginning of what? Civil disobedience movement. Following him. So next, 
This is also a statue of Dante March itself, depicting the salt law. Okay, so um, this is a statue graved in stones. Okay, this is the statue graved in stones, and this you all will find it in Gujarat. All right. So now, what do you think this is? Salt. So, Gandhi ji, you see a Gandhi ji, right? Yes, he is picking up some salt and manufacturing the salt. Okay. So, this is depicting the thing that a handful of salt he picked up, right? That is, this is that depicting. So, now, who do you think this person is? Yes. Yes, our chief minister, right? So, recently, uh, like last year, he also went to Dandi, okay, to support the salt march, okay, to support the Dandi march. He also went to Dandi and joined the salt march, okay. Here are the pictures. Here, you see, right? So this is the salt march where our chief minister had also joined. So that's it, okay. <laughs> Okay, so I think everybody is clear. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So any questions till here? No, no, no. no? no. Nothing? No, no. Nothing? Okay. So then let me ask you some questions. Should I? Yes, yes. 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 Okay. So raise your hands and stand up, alright? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So uh, who is the viceroy then? Yes? Lord mm -hmm. Yes. The Viceroy then was Lord Irwin. Very good. Sit down. So the next question. Uh, when did the salt march started? Yes? March 1930. Lovely. 11th March 1930. Okay. So that's the right answer. Very good. Uh, 11th March 1930 was the day salt march started. Alright? Now... Why did Gandhi ji just chose salt as a weapon to fight against the Britishers? Yes? Because it is very essential and it is consumed by rich and poor people. Very good, that's correct. Because, why? Because it was very most essential thing, okay? Most essential item that was used by Indians, by every person, right? It was used even by poor, even by rich, okay? But the soil tax made that difficult for the poor people, making the making the soil expensive. Okay. So the last question: um, When what did Gandhi do when he uh, reached Dandi? Yes. He manufactured the soil and violated the law. Okay. So that's the right answer. Very good. Uh, he what he did? He went to the sea coast picked up a handful of salt, alright, and what he did, after saying some lines, he manufactured the salt and he violated the salt law, okay, and this everything marked the beginning of the civil <laughs>